Hey there everybody, T-Shirt Booth here for GSHelper.com and in this video we're going to talk about in-game menus. Um, as most of you know already, your screen real estate is very important, it's very valuable. Um, so to take up, you know, precious screen space with buttons and, and your menu and all that kind of stuff, it kind of takes away from the rest of your game. Um, so Today I'm going to show you a little bit about um, you know sliding in your menus so they're out of the way when you're playing your game, but they're you know they're they're there when you need them. Um, and to start off this, um, what I like to do usually is because um, I like to have things on the outside of my screen area. Um, I usually go into the scene and I make the scene bigger, even though I only want it to be the normal size. I make the scene bigger so I have I have room to put stuff. So we're going to go into scene and then size, and I'm going to create the width um, probably around 800. I don't need a lot of room. Um, sometimes this happens here. You just simply hit home, go back in, and it's the size I need. Now I need room on the left, not the right, because I want my menu to slide in from the left. So you click on the camera here, and I'm just going to drag that over yeah, somewhere around there. So the game's always going to start there anyways. Um, I hit preview, and you see it's there. It's just like normal. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to drag in our slided menu. I'm going to put that here. Now it's bigger than what I need. I just grabbed some art from another game I made a couple years back. Um, let's drag that down a bit. Let's see. That's a pretty good size. So I'm going to have it come in, you know, like that in my scene. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it out a bit to the edge of the scene so you can't see it. So when I hit preview, you'll notice it, it's not there. Okay? I go ahead and get rid of that pause button and then re add it to where we're going to put our pause. So I'm going to put my pause right up top here, nice and out of the way. Perfect. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into attributes. I'm going to create a pause attribute. Yes, Game Salad has a pause behavior, but I almost never use it. Uh, and the reason for that is because it um, uses another scene to pause over top, which causes the loading little loading wheel at the bottom corner, and I, I really don't like that. So I tend to use um, a custom made pause for all my games. Um, so we're going to use an index. I'm going to hit choose. And the reason why we're doing index is just because we're going 0 to 1. It's never going to go to a negative number or anything like that. We're going to call this pause. And on our pause button, we're going to create a rule that says when touch is pressed, change attribute game dot pause to, and we're going to do open bracket game dot pause plus 1 close bracket percent two. So every time you hit it, it's going to add plus one to game.pause. Um, but we really only want zero and one, zero and one. So that's why we have percent two. So with percent two, it gives you two options, which is zero and one. If I put percent three, it would be zero, one, two, zero, one, two, and so on. So we have that there. So now we have a trigger. So when we pause the game, we have a trigger game.pause. And we're going to trigger this menu to slide in when we pause the game. So first thing we need to do is figure out what position of the X this is in right now. I'm just going to round that to an even number, so 89. Uh, I just did that by clicking on the one in the scene, going to position, and see what it is, 89. Okay, so we know it starts off at 89. So what we're going to say, we're going to put a rule here is create rule when attribute game pause equals one and there we go okay um, we're going to interpolate oh, something's going on here I think my keyboard stopped working here. I might need a new battery. Just give me a second here.
All right, so that's better. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to interpolate, and we're going to interpolate self position x two, and I forgot to grab the value of that. So we're going to hit back, and uh, let's go in here again. So that was eighty nine, and for here. We're going to drag this, I'm going to hold the shift button, drag it into about where I want it, and I open it again. So 208, I guess 209. I'm going to put this back to 89. Make sure that's 89. So 89 and 209. So I'm going to go in here, and we're going to say interpolate to 209. And then what we'll do is we'll do an otherwise. And I will drag, uh, I'll press Alt Option and drag this down into the otherwise. So I just basically copying it. And we're going to put this 89. Now we need for the duration um, how fast it's going to slide over. I usually do about 0 0.1. And we'll do 0 0.1 again. And we'll hit preview. And you'll see now when I hit pause, the menu slides in. When I hit pause again, it slides out. It's in, out, in, out. So as you see, the, the pause is on top. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here. I'm going to select this actor and go layout uh, up top and hit. Um, actually, I'll show you an easier, a better way just so you can know. Um, in the layers here, you'll see your pause is on top. You can just simply drag this down. And that's in scene layers. So now I'm going to hit preview. Okay, but you don't want to unpause it from behind there. So now we're going to fix that issue. So we're going to go in here, and I'm going to grab another pause button, and I'm going to put it right, right there, right in the middle. Okay, and we'll see what start that is. That starts at uh, let's go 118. Okay, one. 18, there we go. Sorry guys, I'm just having trouble with my keyboard. I need to change my batteries. Um, so, um, bear with me here. Uh, 118 to start. And um, let's find out where this would probably be good. Let's see here. Preview. No. Drag it out a bit more. Preview. Uh, a little too much. That's perfect. So go in here. So it was 118. Now let's call this uh, 239. 239. So 118 and 239. I'm just going to write that down. And I'm going to go back. And um, because it's, it's two different pause buttons, um, I'm going to put a rule in here. Uh, in our pause, create rule, and we're going to say if self um, self position y is less than um, because we know it's in the middle there, it's at like 160. So I'll say if it's less than 200. <laughs> Again, my keyboard here. So less than 200. then we can do this. So we'll say create a rule inside this one. And we're going to say if attribute game pause equals 1 we will interpolate self position x 2 and um, because we want out, it's the 239 number we had. And for duration, we'll do 0 0.1 again. We may have to change this, we will see. And then we'll say otherwise, and again I'll alt, drag, and copy this. And we'll send it back to 118 where we wanted it. And so now I'm going to hit back, and I'm going to drag this over to the 118 spot. I'll just open it and make sure it's at 118. 
you want to make sure it's very important that it's set to the number of which you're interpolating to. So if you're if you're interpolating to 118, it needs to be in 118 from the very start. Otherwise, it'll trigger right away, and you know weird things can happen. So we hit preview, and I'll pause, unpause, pause, unpause, and now you can see I can do it with this one too. So now what we need to do is we need to disable the button that's up here um, when it's paused. So let's go into our pause button. And so when we have when touch is pressed, um, we'll just add here. Um, when touch is pressed and attribute game pause equals zero. So when it's not paused, this button will work. Now I'm going to copy this down here, and I'm going to put it inside this rule here. And then I'll say when touch is pressed and it equals 1, this button will work. Um, again, because it's lower than the 200, so we know we can distinguish between the two buttons. Um, this basically saves us from making two actors. It's really cool. So I'll hit preview now. You'll see I pause it, and I can't unpause it from up there, but from down here... Oh, I still can't. Hold on a second. Let's see what I change when touch is pressed. Uh, and pause equals 1. Change pause to... Hmm, let me see here. Okay, so um, I guess uh, because I have when cell position Y is less than 200, um, this one's overpowered. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it and hit create rule. And we're going to say when attribute gain, uh, self position Y is greater than and we'll do 200 um, so that way it knows when it's the top button it does this when it's the bottom button it does this so I'll hit preview and we'll pause it perfect I can't unpause it from there but here it unpauses pause unpause pause unpause so how do you see all that real estate you save by not having your menu up top and stuff like that um, so now you can add all sorts of stuff um, let's hit back and I have some more images here so let's go a return to menu I'll go in here and I'll change the size I think it had the other buttons let's go one let's go 60 uh, and this one 60 there we go so I got a menu button let's put that there all right, now I'm going to show you a little trick. So we have our um, this rule here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to click on behaviors, and I'm going to drag this into our behaviors. And so basically, we're copying that. And now I'm going to go into the level select, and I'm going to take it from our custom behaviors and drag it back in here. Um, you can only do this when you're using um, attributes that aren't made yourself in the cell like in self attributes like this is a self position x so it's fine but if you, you made a self attribute you wouldn't be able to copy this from actor to actor um, but because we're using a self attribute that exists for everybody it's good to use um, so what we need to do is find out uh, the position of this so let's open it up and we'll change that to 78 because we want a nice even number and um, we'll go into it and um, change that to 78. And now we need to figure out where we want it in here. I'm going to probably say there. Let's hit preview and see. Uh, no. Uh, let's see here. Let's go 200 and see if that works. Uh, No, I'm going to say probably 180. Uh, no, let's try 190. 190. Uh, I forgot what number that was supposed to be at. 78. So put that back to 78. So let's see if 190 is good. So hit preview. Uh, a little bit more. So let's go with... 198. Let's see if that's good enough. That's pretty good. And you can just make these all day long. So that's your menu button. Uh, what else do I have here? Images. 
Uh, let's go to a refresh button. Sixty and sixty. And we're going to go in here because I want to use the same, uh, almost the same attribute. So I'm going to hit behaviors and drag that into custom behaviors again so it has the numbers. And we'll hit the refresh. I'll drag it in. And we'll drag this onto the scene. But this time, instead of 78, I guess it'll be... Uh, Let's go 65. And go in here. Change that to 65. And hit preview. See where we're at. So it's going out a bit too far. So let's uh, shorten that to 185 maybe. That's pretty good. And let's add one more button in here just for... Just for fun, let's go images, and we'll do our sound on and off button. I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to save this just in case. File, save as. Slide menu. And we'll go in behaviors. Drag this in here. And it's going to be the same as the first one, I believe. So we just want to make sure that it's at 78 to start with. So let's bring that in. Oh, let's go in here and set my size first. So I want 60. And 60. Let's see here. What was the number for this? 78. So we'll make sure this is at 78. There we go. Hit preview. So from one pause button, we now have an entire menu, level select, reset, uh, sound on and off. Um, and you just saved yourself a ton of real estate. I hope this video helps. Head on over to gshelper.com. You can download the file, play with it, um, do what you need to do, and um, I'll see you guys in the next video.